Happy holidays from the bluegrass. We are ready to go for college basketball this Christmas season. So strap on your skates, take another turn around the rink, and come right inside Rupp Arena with us. It's looking a lot like tip-off, and we're just about ready to go between Florida A&M and number 19, Kentucky. And with that, we welcome you inside Rupp Arena. Santa's here. So is Dane Bradshaw. I'm Tom Hart. Thanks for being with us today. A couple of tweaks to this Kentucky team after the loss to UCLA. So Cal has checked his list twice, and he's made two changes to the starting lineup. Trying to send a message to the rest of the guys? Yeah, when you look at Chris Livingston and Lance Ware, they started the second half against UCLA, waited for the opportunity, and these guys performed despite the loss. Let's start with Livingston. He was terrific from the field. Gave them 14 points in that loss, but it wasn't just his production offensively. It was how he played, the physicality he played with that has earned them this, him this opportunity. And when you look at Lance Ware, you say, wait a minute, I don't know, is he fit at the four or five in there with Shibway? Well, let me tell you something. In that last game, he played the right way for Coach Cal. He was extremely productive. Bottom line is the Wildcats were better as a team when Lance Ware was on the court. And yes, whether it's a message being sent to the rest of the players are purely rewarding for them, them for the production. Either way, this is your starting lineup for tonight's game. So Hall of Famer John Calipari promised a couple of tweaks to the lineup, and that's what we got today. 25-game home court win streak is the longest active among SEC teams, and that is on the line tonight. And on the other side, Robert McCollum, longtime assistant in the SEC. He was with Lon Kruger at Florida when they went to the 1994 Final Four. Head coach at Western Michigan and at South Florida. And now leading the Rattlers of the SWAC. He's got a brand new roster and a lot of turnover from last year. And already a tough schedule for Florida A&M. FAMU's got the number seven strength of schedule. They played Oregon, Oregon State. Michigan, Florida, Georgia, and oh, by the way, their next game against number one, Purdue. Reigning National Player of the Year, Oscar Sheboy and the Cats breaking out the black unis for the first time. Mixing it up a little bit. And welcoming the Rattlers from the SWAC in this Unity Series game. Tip is controlled by FAMU. FAMU team is 2-7 and seven on the season. They're coming off of a tough loss to Louisville on the road to start their road trip. Lost by six. Harassed Kenny Payne's Cardinals into 22 turnovers and turned that into 21 points. Robert McCullum telling us this afternoon, I don't think we'll be able to turn over Kentucky like we did Louisville. Yeah, they're not going to be able to rely on that, so they must execute this half-court set. Get a pretty good look there. Take the big man off the bounce. That's Jalen Bates who's able to get it to go. So a new starting five for Kentucky. They mentioned the motivation to get guys in there. And Cal really happy with what Lance Ware was doing from a screening standpoint, trying to get some of their shooters free. He's also excited about going high low and maybe getting some of those double teams away from Oscar. And here they try to go to it right now. They sag in on Shibwe. Jason Wallace into the lane. Fantastic freshman gets the first bucket for the Cats. A solid ball movement there, the right decision making. Wallace takes his time. Very patient score is 22 in black. 11 newcomers this season for this FAMU team. Last year, 13 and 17, but a winning record in conference, they're new to the SWAC, longtime MEAC squad. Little penetration cut off, leak ahead. Here's Chris Livingston. Easy dose for Kentucky. Wow, what a strip by Ware and Wallace down low. Wallace always has his hands in there, one of the top steel getters in the country. Livingston takes care of the rest. Wallace averaging two and a half steals per game, sixth. And the SEC had a game earlier this season where he took it away eight times. Jordan Chapman puts it up. Wheeler with the long rebound. No numbers for the Cats, but they'll push it inside to Shibwe. Oscar harassed. A lot of green jerseys around him. And we'll get a jump ball. What do you expect out of Oscar Shibwe tonight? Well, he's got to have better hands. Usually that's not a problem. He wasn't expecting the pass there, but he'll get that fixed. How about the strip and rip here and the kick ahead? And it looks like a small thing, okay? Livingston gets out in the open court, but that's a great read by him. He realizes his teammates are going to get it. That's not snowboarding. That is being a smart player and beating everybody else down the court. You call it snowboarding? I always thought it was cherry picking back where I was from. It was a... Okay, I'll go with cherry picking. Whatever. No, either way, I think you is know. Is that why they call you Tom Cherry Picking? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I got my four and a half points a game? 
on eight on eight cherry picks. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky coming off of a disappointing loss to UCLA, lost 63 to 53. Shots just 33 percent in that game in the Garden. Didn't score in the last four and a half minutes and missed their last 11 shots. Here's Mike Smith. Lance Ware had the rebound and then got tied up. And we'll get two jump balls here in the first two and a half minutes. Well, and the fans are giving Ware a nice little ovation here. They recognize his effort, and that's what he's in the game for, to bring the energy. He's not looking for his own shot. He's trying to impact the game on both ends of the court. And pardon me, that was a foul on Jalen Bates, not a jump ball after all. Here's some of this pressure. They're not expecting to turn Kentucky over as much as they are trying to disrupt them a little bit offensively. Well, they were able to turn Louisville over with that same 1-2-2. Two, two. Oscar got it off quickly. Boy, that is a pinpoint post pass right there. Perfectly delivered by Wheeler. Bates was open, but Shibway got his big mid side. Ten and three-quarter inch hands for Oscar Shibway. Here's Casey Wallace from the corner. Big start for the Cats. Everybody's in on the fun now as Wallace is hits for a three. Well, terrific spacing there. Something that's been an improvement from last game to this one early on. Wildcats running well in their secondary break. Bamu scored the first bucket of this game, a 9-0 Cats run. And then a Rattlers turnover. Let's take a look at this post pass here. You want to show a target hand, and this is a great feed by Wheeler. He says, instead of the bounce pass, I'm just going to throw it up top. Great job of keeping it high by Shibwe. And then, of course, the activity here with these great hands by Shibwe pushes up the court. Casey Wallace gets deep in that corner where he's become such a confident shooter for this Kentucky team. Cal just made eye contact with Chris Livingston. He said, shoot it, shoot it. Want him to get it off. Here's Oscar, another push shot, another bank shot. He's got four. Now this might be a game where Shibwe shoots about 90%. I think he's going to get some really good looks at the paint. Florida A&M averaging less than 55 points a game. They've really struggled shooting the ball. 362 out of 363 Division I teams in offensive efficiency. They turn it over a lot, too. Wallace oh, perfect. fouled, and he'll go to the line, shoved from behind Dominguez Stevens. Tom, you and I had a chance to see Wallace in the Bahamas, and the thing that stood out to us the most was the defense and how vocal he was on that end of the court. And to see it translate over the summer to here in season, not all the time does it translate. And they're going to take a look at this one. Swiped at the ball, but has hand on the back a little bit. And the push in the back would be uh, flagrant if they rule that is indeed a push from Dominguez Stevens, who's just back from injury. That was definitely the more dangerous part of that play, not so much the swipe at the ball, but the hand in the back. Well, how about our camera guy, John, taking a charge? What would Rex say? Block charge. I think he got it. <laughs> Good job, John. Anthony Jordan leading the way for the fellas in stripes today with Byron Jarrett and Landon Brandis. So here's Wallace giving the Cats 10 points a game and his steals, the best in the country among freshmen. He plays so mature, doesn't he? His composure, his demeanor. And it, his, his attitude and composure reminds me a little bit of a, a Jalen Hurts. You know, I mean, he just goes about his business, quietly does his thing, and impacts the game everywhere. You just want to get an Eagles reference in early. Bit, just to be clear, bit. that wasn't an Alabama reference for you, <laughs> Tennessee grad, as much as it was the Eagles fan that you are. Kentucky showing some pressure. Wallace almost got the steal. And they force a near turnover. Loose ball to the Cats. Oscar leading the break. Xavier Wheeler will let it fly. Got it. What a start for Kentucky. And big part of that turning them over. Florida A&M turns it over on 27% of its possessions. It's the highest rate in all of Division I basketball. And Robert McCullum uses a timeout. It's a 16-0 UK run. You can't ask for a better start for the Wildcats. And they've been feeding their big man, Oscar Sheway. The Rattlers have no answer for Kentucky who have put up a perfect first four minutes of action.
Ferry had some teaching points coming off of that UCLA loss. His cat's looking great right now, 16 to 2. But let's go back. What did you see on the film, Dane? Well, a couple things that are correctable. They've got to play smarter and with better spacing. Let's take a look at a few clips. Sheboy's going to give them a great trans transition opportunity. Your star point guard, two wings. This has to be two points in a big time matchup like this. No need to float in the air. Make the easy pass. Two points, turnover instead. And then look, take a look at this one. All the attention on Sheboy. You've got three. Three guys and all eyes on Shibwe. The open spot's the same side wing. Roll the tape. Frederick has to kick out to the wing where the open spot is. Instead, spacing's bad. Leads to a turnover. And then once again, keep your eye here on the attention Shibwe gets. Zero in blue is not even looking at his man who he's guarding. Wallace and Toppin must space here and move while their man is not watching them. Roll the tape, and you'll see that's too easy for zero. He did not have to pay for cheating the play at all. And so you look at those things on film, and you say, hey, the bad news is they made some of those errors. The good news is they are extremely correctable and coachable. And I think so far, despite the competition not being up to par with last game, this first few minutes has been terrific from that standpoint, running their lanes, spacing the court because I thought that was really where they lost the game was the first half execution for Kentucky. So that leaves Kentucky two and three against quad one and quad two teams. They still have plenty of opportunities, obviously, in conference. Uh, and out of conference, Kansas still in the Big 12 SEC challenge, but missed opportunities. Michigan State game they gave away, a UCLA game where they Offenses went away the last 11 minutes of the contest. We got a great defense out near midcourt, and he's able to force another FAMU turnover. But, Tom, to follow up on that point is this is not a Kentucky team that's going to out-talent you game in, game out in the SEC. Uh, I think you could argue that talent-wise, there's three or four teams that can hang in there with them. So they have to play smarter. They've got to space the court better and be one of the more savvy teams in the SEC if they want to have a title in conference play. Wheeler goes all the way down the lane. So you're talking about teams like Alabama, Arkansas, just as a couple of examples that have more talent on the floor night in and night out than Kentucky? Yeah, I would say equal to or at times maybe greater than. And sometimes that can be just based on personnel and strengths and weaknesses. And so I think Kentucky, they, they might get humbled a little bit where they say, man, you know, maybe I do need to use my teammates more or listen in film room a little bit more to make sure we're getting the best shot we can because it, it's not going to be one on five by any means. And, and I don't think they've been a selfish team necessarily. I think those are just some correctable mistakes because last year, Tom, was a really smart team. They faded towards the end of the season because of the injuries, but that was a smart team with Davion Mintz and Kellen Grady in the backcourt. And last bucket from Dominguez Stevens, first since the opening possession for FAMU. Shot clock at five. Wheeler, shot clock at three. Lobs it up, didn't find the rim. And Ware did beat the shot clock, and FAMU's out of bounds with it. Peyton Williams was standing over the end line. Good hustle by Ware and Shibway. Well, if you stay active, good things will happen. I mean, that was ready to be a shot clock violation. Just the activity of Ware keeping it alive leads to an extra possession. Here's Wallace working from the elbow. Now Livingston into the lane. A chance for Famu to run. Stevens leaked out. Seton Hall transfer cups and hits. He's got back-to-back -back buckets and he's going to the line. They missed him the first eight games of the season. Just got him back. He goes in here like a fullback. Just cuffs the ball and shoves off the defender. Says, get off me. <laughs> gets, gets the and one. I think it was a little bit more of a push off there, but gets the end one nonetheless. Foul on Livingston, and now a chance for Cal to make some lineup changes. Jacob Toppin, who had been a regular starter, enters. Antonio Reeves and C.J. Frederick had shared time starting at the two, and they're both on the floor. This is a much more offensive lineup on the floor right now for Kentucky. Well, you've got multiple shooters out there on the court. And Coach Cal's still trying to figure out his team, and they're tinkering with different lineups and rotations. And this is one I think everybody would like to see come to fruition with the ability to spread you out as long as they can hold their own defensively. Toppin gives it up for Reeves. 
the 16 footer goes. Antonio Reeves just two for 13 in the game against UCLA. The guards did not shoot the ball well. He's got a scores mentality though. I mean, you come in first play, you get the look. A lot of guys would turn that down. Not number 12. Oscar got switched off. I felt like against UCLA there were a lot of switches that they made one through five to put Kentucky in a bad spot. Stevens jumper goes over the backboard and there was some times where Oscar ended up guarding a guard and Severe ended up guarding a five. Well, I think that's one area they could really improve on is Wheeler's got to get skinnier when he gets screened. You got to be able to fight over the top so that you don't require that switch and get clipped on that. I'd like to get skinnier over the holidays. Not <laughs> likely to happen. Shibwe with the jumper. Yeah, we saw him practicing that after shoot around. It was just money time and time again. He has really worked on that and earned it to have a ton of confidence shooting. Catch 9 of 13 to start this game. And the Rattlers with another turnover. That is their seventh in the first seven minutes. Out of all these guys coming off the bench, I know only two of them with Reeves and Toppin, who were starters previously. Uh, my concern for Coach Cal, I'd be saying, all right, where, where's Toppin's head at? Because this was going to be his year. It doesn't mean he's permanently coming off the bench. But so far, I like the body language. And for Toppin, if he can focus on energy plays first, the rest of his game will elevate. Frederick with the little floater. Toppin couldn't get the tip in to go. Really interesting talking with Cal today at practice. The focus that he's putting on the lineup relative to simple things like setting good screens yeah. for shooters and shooters getting open on screen. Yeah, we, we asked him about We said, hey, there was a lot of times where Reeves was maybe coming off a top and screen and there's just no contact made. And it, it's it's not just those guys. It's everybody. The screener's got to be better, but the guy coming off the screen has to set his man up and be more physical as well. Wheeler behind that, a screen from Onyenso. Gargisa is off the mark. Offensive rebound for the Rattlers with Oscar, who's leading the SEC with nine defensive rebounds a game on the bench right now. Wheeler got his hands on it. It'll be family basketball when we return. Happy holidays from Rupp Arena and a great start for this Kentucky team. Up 22 to 7 on FAMU. Marks the second edition of the Unity Series, a five year partnership between Kentucky and the SWAC. And part of the honorees tonight, the family of uh, Reggie Warford, who was the first black men's basketball player to graduate from Kentucky, played from 73 to 76, part of an NIT championship team and an assistant coach. Reggie passed away in May at the age of 67. His wife and sons, Grant Tyler, honored Cal and Reggie coached together at Pitt. And Cal spent some time talking today about how Reggie influenced him and they had grown so close that we've also honored Clement Johnson tonight, former head coach of FAMU, who's in the building, played 10 years in the NBA, was a second round pick of the Blazers in 1978. Uh, Reggie Warford's impact was felt long after he played at Kentucky and actually immediately after he played. Uh, that was an NIT championship team for the guy who was Mr. Basketball, Brian Station in Muhlenberg County. And he played a key role in opening up that recruiting and getting some key players then to come to Kentucky. Warford would ultimately become the first back player to stay at Kentucky for four seasons. And as I mentioned, a, a first to graduate. And his impact felt a long time. So Kentucky family certainly misses Reggie after he passed in May, but great to see the family out there and honor him tonight. Part of that influence is, by the way, Goose Givens, who he convinced to come play at Kentucky. He's on the radio crew now with Tom Leach. Most outstanding player of the Final Four. And Jalen Bates gets one to go. He's got four. Leonard Hamilton, one of those guys that convinced him to come and said, hey, not everybody's built to handle this situation right now, but I think you are tough enough. And, and the rest is history. Reeves gives it to Toppin, shot clock at five. Toppin gives it up, and Xavier Wheeler launches a three. Rebounded by Byron Smith, Jr. from Placa, Florida. Smith keeps it himself. Yeah. 
Push ahead to C.J. Frederick. Pulls the trigger on his first opportunity. It's a long time coming. Didn't attempt a three over the previous two games. Well, he sprints the court well. Terrific advance pass by Wheeler, and I love that Frederick was hunting his shot. That's what he's in the game to do is be a three-point threat. They're going to get Reeves for the reach in, I believe. Look how quick this is. I mean, you find your point guard, does top it, and no dribble for Wheeler. Just a straight kick head, bullet pass. I mean, that's how you practice it. That's how you execute it. And for a guy like Frederick who needs to see one go in, keep his confidence going, I think this Kentucky team is really going to need Frederick come March with those types of shots. First free throw goes for Jalen Bates. By the way, that last foul was indeed on Frederick. He, of course, shot the ball really well at Iowa as Casey Wallace and Oscar Sheway return. 47% over two years as a Hawkeye. But against Bellarmine and Michigan, he was four for ten from the floor from deep. That was a quality win across the pond that they got against Michigan a couple weeks ago. Well, well, Frederick and Reeves are two guys specifically when we talk about coming off those screens, Reggie Miller style. Watch out. Oh. But th those guys, teams are going to be physical with them. They're, they don't have a huge frame. They're going to try to bump them off those screens, so they got to be able to come off them a little bit better. Oh, and that is a scary play for Shibwe and the defender. You stand in there and take one from Big Oscar. That takes some guts. Mm, it's like a semi on an icy highway. <laughs> Stay away. Be careful. Cow said he wanted to see some lineups of two bigs. He started with Lance Ware on the floor. Now Oscar Lugano on Yenso. Out there at the same time. And it wasn't just going high low on the offensive end, but let's see if we can defend with these two bigs. In the corner for three. That's Jalen Bates. He's got a team high eight. Now that the Rattlers have settled down a little bit. Those seven turnovers early that led to 14 Kentucky points is what got them in such a hole. But in the half court, they're starting to get some decent looks. Kind of how they looked against Louisville on Saturday. They cut that Louisville lead to two in the second half. Thanks to turning the Cardinals over. And even though they had a big drought on the offensive end, they were right in it. Sheboy goes high low on Yenso. Lost the dribble and turned it over. That's a tough pass and catch right there. A lot of traffic. And here it is. A little bit of high low action. And good job fronting, making it difficult, and great backside help by FAMU. Smith working on Wallace. Short corner two. And another jumper goes for Jalen Bates. He's into double figures. And Cal will use the timeout. That big lead has been whittled down to 10. And execution on the defensive end. Something looks like John Calipari wants to talk about with his squad. Number 19, Kentucky over Florida a and A lot of great things Oscar Shibway has done this year. He's your reigning SEC Player of the Year, National Player of the Year. Well, no surprise at this one early on. He was able to dominate inside the paint, whether it was in the half-court set or here a little bit in transition. Just does such a terrific job keeping the ball high, and then we talked about a little pick-and-pop action. He's really mastered that 15 to 18-footer. Although I think in the past couple minutes he's been getting an earful from Coach Cal for a couple defensive breakdowns, but all things considered, I think they're lucky to have him. He broke Shaq's 30-year Rupp Arena record with 28 rebounds against Western Kentucky last year. Talking to him in the offseason we're down in the Bahamas he said I was just so confused there's so many things God has done for me that have been great and he said but I had to ask God I've got all these trophies I'm the best player in all of college basketball why doesn't the NBA want me and he said well your job is to go back to Kentucky spread the word and improve your game well this guy has continued to be a force down low he's the greatest rebounder I've ever seen in college basketball and just a terrific leader for this Kentucky team, but he's got unfinished business. There's no question about it. He wants to put that national championship banner in the rafters. He 
you also asked him what God tell you about your jump shot. Yeah, yeah, and he said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, God told me he helps those who help themselves. So I'll keep working. You know, let's keep trying to improve that jump shot. Here's C.J. Frederick off a nice kick from Wallace, and it goes. I love it for C.J. Frederick. I mean, that's how you read the penetration. You move to the open spot, catch and stick. Williams fires right over the top of Shibway. Well, they've liked the matchup there. They're spreading Kentucky out a little bit. They've had three straight jumpers on that end of the court on Shibway's man, daring the big man to have to come out and close out. The two of those three were threes, and th that goes back to what Cal was talking about at shoot around today. Let's see what we can do defensively with this big lineup on the floor. Frederick again off the curl. Got another! <laughs> CJ Frederick is a perfect three for three tonight. And he's got his looks in different ways. You've seen transition off the penetration. That time a little flip on the wing. He's feeling it. You may look at this game quizzically and say, well, what really can Kentucky gain from this? What were they, 35-point favorites in this contest against yeah. FAMU or something like that? Well, this is what they can gain, building confidence for a guy who was taken out of the starting lineup at C.J. Frederick. Oh, it's huge. I don't care who the competition is. When you're a shooter, you need to see that ball go through the hoop. And right now, C.J. Frederick, maybe for the first time in a while, is seeing a big rim for Kentucky. And I love that look right there, that dribble handoff. As teams play off of somebody like Shibwe, that means the help defender is sagging off. So if he just does a dribble handoff, it's a pass to your good shooter with a handoff and also a ball screen, and you're going to get that look. Coming up next, 10th-ranked uh, Arkansas Razorbacks are home in Fayetteville against UNC Asheville. Arkansas, one of those teams you're talking about with incredible athleticism. Now they're missing Trevor Brazil, who was out with a torn ACL, and that would be a huge loss for Arkansas in terms of not what they turn to on the interior. They've got other options, but nobody quite as athletic as Brazil. Frederick Harass now drawing attention to two different Rattlers. Adu Thierro into the game for Kentucky. Wheeler got away with a carry, looked like. Here's Ware in traffic. Near flop, and Ware gets the bucket. I thought that was a good no call. And credit Ware for just keeping his balance in there and not looking for the ref. A lot of guys would just fall down on this, but he's able to keep his pivot foot, go up strong, gets the and one. It's a lot of traffic. And yeah, I'd say that qualifies as a flop, but. You'd rather get the and one than the flop foul. That was the second personal on FAMU's leading scorer, Jalen Bates and Hans Lewis June. Here's Kentucky, 66% from the free throw line. I'd say that's an area they need some improvement on, but again, in this game, good opportunity to get your confidence and rhythm back because that can be a contagious part of the problem as well. Talking about it today with Cal, he said, you know, I had this issue before at Memphis. Wheeler picks the pocket and it's taken right back. And then Oscar commits the foul at midcourt. That is a second on uh, Kentucky's big. Without fact checking, Cal, here's what he said about his <laughs> Memphis team. He said, you know, we're a 55% free throw shooting team. But it was a great team. In the last four or five minutes of the game, we're at 80%. He's did some quick math. He goes, really, that means we're like 40%. Blue Deltas look good, but free yeah. throw shooting is not. Right. And he mentioned against Power 5 teams, this Kentucky team has been 58% from the line. And so they, he's not asking to be the top free throw shooting team in the country, but that can't be the difference between, between winning and losing. And I, I think there's a lot of guys that have proven throughout their careers they're better free throw shooters than they're showing, whether it's Wheeler or Shibway. And I'd be surprised if that percentage doesn't go up over the course of the season. Multiple missed front ends in the one on one. And Cal all over on Yenso, telling him to go get the ball. Foul on the tail end of that play. And we'll see Damian Collins in the game. Collins did not play against UCLA. It's been a really tough run for Damian. Lost his father earlier in the season. Getting ready to go into the Christmas season with that loss hanging over the family's head. 
Cats will get a break over the next few days before they come back for Camp Cal. Piero to Wheeler. Here's Frederick again. Frederick puts it on the floor, kicks out to Fierro. Well, you like the look and the aggressiveness by Kentucky and the play call for Frederick on a little slip screen there. When we talk about different lineups. I'm not sure this is one I predicted to see tonight. When no. you got <laughs> Wheeler, Ware, Fierro, Livingston, and Collins all in at the same time, but everybody get an opportunity to show their improvement from one game to the next or if they had a DNP recently. Chance to step up. Jordan Tillman is the leading scorer for FAMU. He's been struggling with his shot lately. And he threw that one to Owensboro. Yeah, struggled with the trap there. Right idea with the skip pass. That was where the open man is. And that's what the defense is going to dare you to try to make is that difficult one across the court. Here's Livingston. I think we've got a foul on the floor before the shot. Nice. The second on Dominguez Stevens. Strong drive, getting that paint touch and not settling. I think sometimes. Kentucky players pick up their dribble and they want to shoot that mid-range shot. Get themselves to the line. The Livingston getting the start today is first outside of the first three games of the season. And another one coming and tomorrow we got a college hoops doubleheader. South Carolina hosts Western Kentucky at 7 Eastern. Then it's a Bragg and Rights game in the Chile St. Louis. Number 16 Illinois takes on Missouri. That's always a fun one in the Christmas spirit in St. Louis. Half of the arena blue and orange, half black and gold. What's your travel situation going for that one? Looking pretty smooth. <laughs> if anybody has a sleigh that can get me to St. Louis, I'd appreciate it. Stevens from 15. Got it. Stevens hit a couple for him. He's played some good, confident basketball. Wheeler kicks it. Here's Livingston. Where? Great energy minutes in the second half against UCLA. Ware making his fifth start of the season tonight. Remember, he started early in the year when Oscar was coming off of his knee injury. Mid-range clunker. That could be the challenge with him at the four. The defense is packed in because they don't respect the pick and pop game like they do with Sheboy in there. Wheeler had nowhere to go. Stevens, pretty. He's done a little bit of everything for FAMU so far tonight. Transferred from Seton Hall. A bunch of newcomers on this team. Only two returnees. And they had to hit the transfer portal hard. Took a lot of guys sight unseen. Coaches really didn't see him. They hadn't seen campus. They were coming off of NCAA probation. Only allowed four visits. And a blocking foul on Williams. Well, a lot of good things happening for Kentucky in this one, and one of them is getting some confidence back for your three-point specialist. C.J. Frederick has been on fire for the Cats in this first half. All right. <laughs> I mean, we're getting some Twitter feedback that maybe Snowbird is an acceptable... Of course it is. I don't know. Here's what's acceptable. Uh, SEC's got to a great start in basketball this season. Arkansas 10 and 1. What an impact Eric Musselman has made. Reignited that fan base, uh, which is one of the best in all of college basketball. Alabama got outscored by Gonzaga and Birmingham this weekend. That is a very talented team. And Mississippi State just suffered its first loss of the season. What a start for Chris James. Yeah, he's been sensational. And everybody talked about what a fit he would be in Starkville. And making an immediate impact. And even in that loss, only gave up 58 points. So that team is going to be locked into the scouting report. How about Alabama? Brandon Miller, that's a freshman to watch. Nick yeah. Smith at Arkansas. Man, there is some talent. I can't wait to kick off conference play here soon. Miller had 36 against Gonzaga this weekend, most by a Division I freshman this year. He's uh, one and done. 
Ware goes one for two. And topping back on the floor for Ware. Kentucky picks up full court. It looks like we get two very extreme examples of Kentucky basketball. With two bigs on the floor, it's like Cows hold UMass offense. We're going to grind it out. We'll play this thing in the 50s. We want to smash in the mouth. With a lineup like this, they pick up 94 feet. Seems like they want to run. Yeah, I think they got to figure out which has the best complimentary basketball. Who can hold their own where they're not going to give up anything on the defense again at that time? They've got Kentucky scrambling a little bit on the perimeter, whether they go kind of small with Toppin on the four or, uh, or Shebway. Rathers have made each of their last three attempts. Closing to nine. That's where Kentucky just has to be better in the half-court offensive ex execution. Once the Rattlers stop turning it over, Kentucky has not been able to score as easily. Jordan Tillman doing a great job on Frederick, not giving him any space. Wallace with one. Found the rim. Collins fought for the rebound and keeps it alive. Now Reeves from deep. And it rolls home. And he's got a pretty shot, Duddy. Just a rainbow. That thing almost hit the ceiling. Third in the league at 45% from deep. He was a great scorer at Illinois State. Came from Simeon in Chicago, same place John Calipari found a young guard by the name of Derrick Rose and convinced him to come to Memphis. Here's Tillman. Chance to push. Wallace bumped to midcourt by Hans Lewis June. What a luxury it is for Coach Kyle to take your star point guard out of Wheeler and then put the ball in the hands of Wallace. Uh, they have such great options at the point guard spot, the primary ball handler. an entire Netflix show based on John Calipari's in-game communication with his team. Just then the interaction with Toppin going back and forth to try and come up with the play call. Toppin took a bump and will go to the line. Well, if they do drop that series, you know him. He, he's not a follower. He, he's going to have to launch something called Calflix or something. <laughs> it, it's not going to be on traditional streaming. Good job by Toppin. That's something Coach Kyle wants him to do more. Attack, get all the way to the rim. And he's such a great athlete. I do think there's times when he gets the rim, he gets contact. He tends to, to shrink a little bit on that contact. That time did a nice job absorbing it. Getting the one. Three-point play for Toppin. I think his three-point shot's going to come around. He struggled with it in the regular season, but we saw him shoot lights in the offseason when, the, when they had their pro day as well. I don't want to see Toppin give up on it. He's worked too hard. A nice slip and a jam by Chase Bars, senior transfer from Western Michigan. I tell you, after the first four minutes, when what the Rattlers had only two points, they were throwing it all over the place, giving up easy buckets. They've been getting some good looks on the defensive end. It's kind of how they look, kind of like how they looked against Louisville. Yeah, just a little ball screen action. Nice pass there. And just no rotation over there. And you got to help and recover quicker or help the helper, one of the two. Jordan Tillman commits the foul. And Kaysen Wallace going to the free throw line. 59% from the line on the season. And another missed front end for Kentucky. They had, I think, four of them late in the game against UCLA. Well, that is something to keep an eye on because Wallace, there might be times where he ends the game at point guard for Kentucky. And when teams are fouling, you got to knock them down late. You got to be able to step up there with great confidence for your team. First half against UCLA, 12 turnovers, 11 field goals. Different story here tonight against FAMU. Loose ball. Stevens fires. Whoa, he plays with confidence, doesn't he? He, he? You know, he's been chippy since the game started. I mean, early on, he had brought the fight to the Wildcats. You saw him get the spectacular and one early on in traffic. He's been vocal. And he's got 13 points on five and six. Leading scorer in this game. I would have not predicted that one. He replaces Wallace. 
25 of FAMU's 32 have come from Stevens and Bates. Shot clock off. After the Kentucky turnover, Wallace stepped on the sideline. Tillman finds Lewis June. Now five. A three. Lewis June drives, dishes with one, and Toppin got a piece of it. That'll end the half. Ten point lead for Kentucky. Cats got off to a fantastic run, a 19 nothing run early on to take control of this thing. FAMU fighting back. Happy holidays from Lexington. And now to my secret Santa, Peter Burns. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas from Lexington, where tonight 19th ranked Kentucky leads Florida A&M by 10 as we get ready to start the second half. Santa, I know him, I know him. He's coming. Welcome everybody, Dane, you smell like beef and cheese. Welcome back to the second half. Happy holidays, <laughs> thanks for putting up with me. Uh, kind of an uneven first half for Kentucky, would you say? Yeah, I thought they got off to a terrific start. Defensively, they were great. They turned them over. They were able to push it in transition. I thought coming off the bench, you saw C.J. Frederick really get into the mix as well, and that was a great sign. That's my biggest takeaway from the first half, it's just how well Frederick looked hunting his shot in transition. Here it is in the half court, penetrate pitch, moves to the open spot, wanting the ball, and here's the dribble handoff as well. But how about the Rattlers, though? I mean, these guys would not go away. Dominguez Stevens, this guy was injured earlier in the year, only played two games, only nine minutes against Louisville. But how about in nine minutes of action in this one, he's got 13 points. But it wasn't just him. Jalen Bates stepped up huge as well for 12. So those two had 25 of the 32 points for the Rattlers in this first half. After a slow start, Rattlers shooting 52% from the floor. C.J. Frederick knocked down three of four threes. He's got nine. You don't have to watch game film for the next few days. You're going to watch how Murray saved Christmas or just go straight to Elf? Based on your recommendation, I'm going to watch it. I know you would never set me up for an inappropriate movie with my kids. <laughs> They'll love it perfectly. Appropriate, family fair. Tillman trying to work out Wallace, nothing doing there. Here's Byron Smith, who has yet to score, gives him eight points a game on average. With all these different lineups that Kentucky has shown, it was really the starting lineup that I thought was the most productive when you look at the first four minutes of this ballgame. Same starting five in the second half for John Calipari. Two big, Shibwe and Ware. And Chris Livingston plugged back into the starting lineup tonight for Kentucky. Here's Casey Wallace. That pass, Livingston was on his way in. Livingston has a habit of coming towards the pass when his teammate is throwing it where he is at, and it gives him you know, an imbalance there, and it be makes the ball be off speed a little bit. If he's going to cut, do it before the pass, not while it's already been thrown in there. Fourth rebound for Shibwe. Wallace. Sure. Nobody stops the ball, and Tillman takes it all the way. First bucket for Jordan Tillman. You've got the fifth best defensive team in the country, according to Kim Palm, and the second to worst offense efficiency team in the country. And sure enough, it's the Rattlers over 50% from the field right now. Payson Wallace answers with a three. And Wheeler does such a good job of getting in the lane. If there's one thing he can do, it is get in the paint and able to find a shooter on the outside. Yeah, to your point, you made just a moment ago, a little surprise, Florida A&M has had so much success offensively. They're averaging a point per possession so far. Wallace with the bump on Tillman. Take a look at that penetration by Wheeler. Does a good job here of just crossover, getting in the air, draws three, four defenders, if you will. And then Wallace, that's a good job of staying put. Staying in the open spot, whereas the possession before when Livingston started running towards the pass caused a turnover.
So FAMU 13 to 26 from the floor, and they've hit four of eight from three. The biggest difference in their loss to Louisville was the Cardinals getting to the free throw line. They had 15 more points from the line than FAMU did. Here's Tillman. Well, they got to get him going. Uh, he's the top scorer for the Rattlers. Ware tried to spike it off of FAMU and totally nutmeg Peyton Williams. Pretty sloppy start to this second half and loses the ball a little bit there. And doesn't have to try that. If he just stays on balance, he could have kicked it out to the corner. Livingston gambled. Lewis June would buy him, but then good hands by Wallace. Taken away. Here's Casey Wallace. And they'll count it. And he'll go to the free throw line. This guy's instincts are just so elite. He has the active hands, the ball pressure. But the quick instincts is what really separates him as a defender. Just look, gets the first deflection, says, oh, I couldn't get a steal there. Let me just go ahead and get another deflection, lead to the other end, and one. And then just such a strong finisher. This is where he does have to improve, though. Get to the free throw line, step up there with confidence, knock it down. He's going back and looking at John Calipari's history in terms of you know, the type of coach he's been. And there was a time at UMass where they finished towards the bottom of the national rankings and steals. He didn't want his guys gambling at all because he wanted his guys to stay in front of the offense. Sheway has it blocked and they got bars for a hand on him. Now that's changed, right? I mean, this is a, a different style of basketball and a guy like in the case of Wallace, it, that's what's going to make him money at the next level. Yeah, but, but what Wallace does that's so unique is that a lot of times a guy might lead the country in steals or the conference and he gambles or comes off the ball and loses his man, but not Wallace. He stays solid and is just opportunistic, and that's what gets him steals in the end. Here's our next women's basketball doubleheader Thursday, December 29th. The Leah Boston in South Carolina play hosts the Texas A&M 7 Eastern. And it's Haley Frank and her Mizzou Tigers taking on this Kentucky team at Mizzou Arena. Both games on the SEC Network and the app. Our LZ's team played a day game today and put 95 on the board over Ohio University over at Memorial. Uh, although there was one guy that you said that didn't, couldn't figure out why he couldn't get into Rupp. Yeah, we were walking around Rupp trying to get to the shoot around. He said, man, how hard is it to get in a women's game? I said, buddy, you're at the wrong place. <laughs> High percentage look on the other side for Jalen Bates, his first bucket of the half. Just a great job by the Rattlers against that pressure, moving the ball extremely quick, finding that back line opening. It was the largest lead for Kentucky a moment ago at 17. What a 19 nothing run to lead 19 to two. Livingston for three. That's a pretty looking shot. Chris Livingston. Yeah, he's very Small capable. sample size, yep. Tillman working with bars for a screen, left it. Had a spin past Wallace. Beautiful move. Yeah, not too many people can do that. Take Wallace one on one, get your spot in the paint, and Tillman a lefty got to his spot. He had 17 in the game against Louisville on Saturday. Part of a long road trip for this FAMU team. They've taken advantage of it. Here's Livingston. Back to back buckets for the freshman from Akron. And I love driving at Sheboy. And that means. If you drive at him, he's got his defender on his back. He can seal off, and you get the easy two off it if he can't get the post feed. Bates trying to shake Ware. Good finish. This has been a good sample for Kentucky with this big lineup when you got a team that can spread you out. Can the bigs move their feet enough to where it's not too much of a mismatch? Wallace down the lane. And there's a similar opportunity that Livingston had. Drive at Shibwe. If the defender's going to be on his back, you're going to have a wide open lane. Lewis June. And 
and Florida A&M getting to the rim at will. Yeah, Coach cal has got to be furious, saying, guys, we cannot give, give up straight line drives in several of them. And then Savir with the offensive foul, 16-point game. And on the other end, here's what you do. You drive at Shibway. If the defender's on his back, you're going to have a wide open lane. And Wallace says, hey, I like that move, Livingston. Let me show you how to finish it with a dunk. Series is a five-year partnership between the SEC and the SWAC to raise awareness and help out HBCU teams. Yesterday, both programs spent the day in Cincinnati visiting the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, and then FAMU visited the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville on Sunday. Great trip for all involved, and great job by Collegiate Athletics to help raise awareness, help the HBCUs. But by the way, the Pac-12 deserves credit as well. FAMI took a road trip to Oregon earlier this year. Oregon's going to go down to Tallahassee and play at their place next year. The Pac-12 is doing something similar, but uh, on the flip side of it, they're doing home-and-home -home series with all the SWAC teams, which is really cool. I think a great way to help. And Listen, a couple ways you can help, right? The bottom line is financially, you pay a team to come to your place, but also help them sell tickets. And Dana Altman takes his Oregon team to Tallahassee. That's pretty cool. No question. What a great opportunity for both programs. The exposure that you mentioned. And it was the, the Buffaloes of Colorado. I was trying to look up where they lost to Grambling State <laughs> right before Tennessee. That yeah. really shocked everyone. That was part of that series. They're supposed yep. to open the season with it. Oregon's going to come a little bit later next year because they're playing in uh, an MTE for those tournaments not far from Tallahassee around Thanksgiving. Dana Altman and Robert McCollum pretty tight. McCollum was on the Oregon staff when they went to the Final Four a few years ago. McCollum also on the Florida staff on time. Look at this feed. And a foul put Toppin at the free throw line. That was an aggressive pass on a move from Reeves to Toppin. This is the second time Toppin's pointed to the sky and said, throw that thing up. And a really good pass by Reeves. It's going to be a throwdown if not for the contact. But I like it. I mean, instead of just running to your spot, keep your head up. If the defense is staring at the ball, then cut backside. These guys can't be stagnant on the perimeter. He would have thrown that down. It would have been a rocking Kentucky Christmas. Top and frustrated. He missed the first. He'll go back for a second. He's at 64% from the free throw line. Betting on Shibway. <laughs> you got two guys trying to figure out, hey, you pinch, I'm going to box them out. I don't care if there's three guys down there. She ends up getting the rebound more times than not. Well, he sure does draw a lot of eyeballs, doesn't he? You pointed out four guys that collapsed on him in the UCLA game and the opportunities that presents to the rest of the team. It was June with the feet inside. Back out to him. Rose June, wild hook shot. Rattlers with the rebound and saved at midcourt. One on the shot clock, and they don't get it off. And since this lineup has come in, we've seen two really good half-court defensive possessions for the Wildcats. Guys are moving their feet a little bit better. Again, a smaller lineup, probably a better matchup defensively against FAMU. Jacob Toppin's been holding his right wrist. He came down hard on that lob attempt. Wallace from behind the screen. You like that play? I do. I like it a lot. If, if the defense is going to go under the screen, no need to dribble any further. Stop and pop. Great read by Wallace. Kentucky had a chance to set up some pressure. Three ball right back at him. That's a good read as well for Tillman. He says, all right, you're going to sit on my left hand, dare me to go to the right. Watch a little step back here for three. Ball is from the Onyenso screen. Here's C.J. Frederick wide open. Made his first three, missed the last two. Onyenso with the tip. <laughs> what a 
Nice job there by Onyenso. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, but gets a paw on it, gets rewarded. Cats up 19. Lewis June draws a foul from Reeves. Well, here's Wallace. Just reads the defense. You go under, I'm going to shoot it. You go over, I'm going to keep driving it. And then Onyenso just staying active here. How about this? Probably was trying to just tip it to himself. He's going to get two points for it. And then for the Wildcats, and then, oh, a little bit too aggressive. They're going to get him on the goaltend. Wow. Probably been better off letting that thing go. Looks like the trajectory had it short, but Lewis June makes it a three-point play. Oh, Reeves got face raked. Looks like something you'd seen Step Brothers. <laughs> and Yenso got fouled and put down on the ground. Don't touch your drum set. <laughs> and I like this play. <laughs> it's taken down. And Yenso's a guy they just keep wanting to find minutes for. Terrific rim protector. Was it part of that Bahamas trip? Yes. And Wallace has just been getting whatever he wants on that ball screen action right now. Bates left open after the shuffle. And Onyenso pulls down another board. Frederick across to Wallace. He's got Reeves in the corner. And a big board by Onyenso, tipped by Chapman. It'll be Kentucky basketball. How about Adana Onyenso making his impact felt with an opportunity tonight? No question. Check out 33 and Black says, throw that thing up, I'll do the rest. Onyenso finishing up high with a beautiful feed from Wallace. Nice action for the Wildcats. Today, this Wildcat team spreads some much needed holiday cheer to those less fortunate. Other Coach Cow's guidance, the team adopts a handful of families each year that provide a Christmas meal, rent money. They got great help from some folks in the community. They gave away TVs. He said, I just want to see my guys and the res help them see the impact that it makes when you help those less fortunate. They gave away a bunch of TVs as well. And said, you, you pay a family's rent for the next six months. It, you see real tears from grandma and mom. And I don't know about a Duke Fierro playing Santa. I don't really know if he was committed to it, but pretty good. I, I've got a request for Santa to do. I need a new starter jacket. My Phoenix Sun starter jacket from 96 is getting a little bit shabby. You didn't have a starter jacket? I did not have a starter jacket, <laughs> oh, no. come on. Cal, the recipient of the Jefferson Award for Outstanding Public Service and Sports, and he's the first men's college basketball head coach to win that award. Great community service, community awareness. And he does a great job rallying the people in the community to help. There's no doubt about that. What a fantastic job they did with the telethon this offseason. Here's Wallace behind the screen again, and another three from behind the screen. Uh, Fan is really frustrated because they got burned on it last time, and then the next possession they said go over, go over, and then sure enough, they go under. Wallace makes them pay. Wallace, as soon as that ball left his hand, he turned to Cal. He said, is this what you want me to do? There's, there's another element to that play that Kentucky was <laughs> in executing some I, I don't I would never look down on a made three, but there was something else to that. And Wallace just figured, all right, I'm open, I'm gonna shoot it. He's got 22. Tillman again. He started to heat up for the Rattlers here in the second half, and they're going to talk through this ball screen action. But this is what Wallace can give you a little bit differently at the point guard spot, is you can't go below the ball screen the way you can with Wheeler. And we're about to see it here for the second time. Rattlers got to call timeout, figure out how the. Well, Santa's rocking tonight. We'll be rocking tomorrow night. Western Kentucky and South Carolina at 7 o'clock Eastern. Illinois and Missouri at 9. By the way, 
Uh, Frank Martin is now the head coach at UMass. I want to encourage you that CBS Sports Matt Matt Orlando did a fantastic piece. I don't know if you've got a chance to read it about what families go through when a coach changes jobs and Frank as always very honest and forthcoming, forthcoming about difficulties. Uh, it was just a sensational read. Uh, absolutely. I did have a chance to read it. It was awesome. Encourage it as well. How about the model of efficiency here? Case and Wallace, 22, has 22 points at 22 minutes. It doesn't get any better than that. On 8 of 10, 6 assists, you name it. He's been phenomenal, whether it's off the ball or playing as the primary ball handler. Wallace has been so steady for the Wildcats this season and just continues to mature. And as everybody else tries to develop, not that he doesn't have some things to improve on as well, but the composure and the reliability is something that you know earns the trust of Coach Cal and this staff. I think when you're a player like Kaysen Wallace and you're a five-star recruit and Wallace McDonald's All-America, Jordan Brand All-Star, averaged 20 points a game at Richardson High School in Dallas. He obviously had games where he had scoring outbursts. I think once you get a third of the way into the college season, you're as talented as him, you learn, you know what, it's not as easy as high school, but I'm still an elite scorer at this level. I can put the ball through the hoop. Yeah, and an efficient guy. And for him to realize, hey, I know what a good shot looks like and a bad shot. His IQ is what really stands out. And we asked about some comps. You know, is it a shy Gilders Alexander? How good is he playing, by the way? Oh, my gosh. He likened his game to a, a Drew Holiday. And so he can defer, but also take over in crunch time is what he liked about that style. Wallace left it short on that drive. Toppin didn't get his hands on it. Saved by the Rattlers, and they have a chance to push it. Meanwhile, blocked on the other end by Reeves. Wallace out to Frederick, looking to share. On Yenso, got tied up. Couldn't get it to go. Had a hold of his right hand and pulled him back. Well, they got to finish that one, but they were lucky to even get a shot off. Frederick can't give it to his big man in traffic like that. And then Peyton Williams with his second triple. I'm really impressed by Florida a &M. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be surprised with how much confidence they're playing with, given their schedule, and they've faced so many big-time programs already. But other than that first four minutes, they have played extremely good. 11 of their 13 non-conference games on the road. Wallace again on Yenso. Lost his handle on it. Includes at Oregon, at Oregon State, at Miami, at Florida, at Georgia. Florida put 102 on it. And again, so it's fun to watch it. And this was a guy that didn't have the benefit of going to the Bahamas. He reclassified. And really, nobody got their first look at him until Big Blue Madness. But just continues to get better and better as he gets a nice round of applause for his effort and energy that he's shown for this Kentucky team. When we talked to the staff back in August about the addition of Onyenso. They said, you know, we're not sure where he'll be offensively, but defensively we think he'll be in a place where he could help us. He's giving them significant minutes. Cats without a bucket in the last two minutes and 13 seconds. Wheeler, Wallace, and Frederick, uh, pardon me, Wallace and Frederick take a seat. And Savir back on the floor running the point. That follow moved by Jordan Chapman. I think one of the uh, concerns for Kentucky is when you get that big lead early in the game the way they had, <laughs> you, you become a little bit disinterested. And so I think there's been some lack of focus on the defensive end, evidenced by a team that's one of the worst efficiency-wise in the country, shooting over 50% on your talented defense. Sheway looking to post up. Shot clock at one. Savir has to fire. And a shot clock violation. But one thing Reeves didn't look to do that others have had success. When Shibwe is posting up and you don't have a passing angle, if his defender's on his back, drive it at him. Try to get past your man. That's where those kind of, you know, assists, if you will, hidden assists that Shibwe can give you just by clearing his man out of the lane. Smith fires. Got it. Byron Smith with his first three. And we've got a 12-point game. 
Kentucky will have to use a timeout. Pardon me, a 10 point game. It's an 11 nothing run. The score is 69 59, Kentucky. Well, FAMU has played number 19 Kentucky even in the second half, 27 apiece, and thanks to an 11 nothing run, the Rattlers have closed within 10. Well, Stevens and Bates really kept them in it in the first half, and Tillman has caught fire for them in the second half, but it's been by committee, and more than just the scoring is how aggressive they've been and the body language, the confidence they've shown. And even when they got down 20, they never gave up any sort of fight at all, and so, I'll say it again. This is an offense that ranks 362nd in the country. They turn the ball over 27% of the time. That's the worst in the country. Mm -hmm. Yet, since they've gotten that under control, they've been able to do some pretty good things in the half court. Once again, the same glimpses that they showed against Louisville in their game on Saturday. With the message Coach McComb has to have for his team is, guys, when we don't turn the ball over, we can be pretty good on offense. That is the key to this team. Livingston yep, good call. touched the line at midcourt, and it's a Kentucky turnover. All right, so the first half is one of experimentation, right? Kind of like my kids working on the Christmas cookies. Yeah. This is now a 10-point game. Kentucky's turned it over nine times. This lineup is really not one of experimentation. This is one that he expects to be official. Yeah, this is, hey, we got to extend this lead. Let's put this thing to bed right now. And Wallace getting the nod at the point guard spot, given how well he's been playing. We'll see how Kentucky answers defensively. Fifth in the country, defensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm coming in. Mid-range jumper off the mark. Loose ball, and it's Livingston who's got it. But this is where Kentucky must be better in the half court set. Can you execute when you get nothing going in transition? Looking for a Shibway and the ball kicked. Where in Frederick will we turn? And some of it's the Rattlers, some of it's Kentucky. But Shibway had a few buckets early on, but for him to only have four field goals so far in this game, I know the minutes have been a little bit more limited than they usually are, but they got to get 34 of the ball. He had a couple of fouls in the first half. You'd expect this would have been a big night for Oscar with a 6-7 defender on it. 12 seconds on the shot clock now after that one goes out of bounds. Cal directing traffic from the sideline. See what they come up with. Shibway offers a screen. Shot clock at five. Wallace from 12 feet. Ware has the rebound, and he gets fouled immediately. Well, if they can get some inside shots there, even though that was mid-range, they can clean up on the glass, can Kentucky, with Ware and Shibway, and that's how they can really put this game away, simply with the offensive rebounding opportunities. Look for Frederick to get open on the screen. Wasn't a great use of the screen, huh? No, he's got to be tougher, get through that, be more physical. Shot clock of five. Reeves takes it himself. Oscar's got the rebound, had it knocked away. Three on three break. Chance for family to cut it to single digits. It was June working on Sheway. Bates, three ball over Reeves. <laughs> he is feeling it. Is Bates. That's now a career high. He had 14 against Florida earlier this season. He's got 19 tonight. Into Oscar with three defenders on him. First field goal of the second half for Sheway. Prior to that previous FAMU three, it hadn't been single digits since it was a nine to two game. That was in a mid, the midst of a 16 nothing Kentucky run early on. Good ball fake, easy jumper by Byron Smith. I am just shocked at how the Rattlers are scoring at will from three and from two. Seven point game with five minutes to go. Did not see this coming. Got to keep going ball screen action with your two best players. Of 
on the floor tonight. Wallace Shibway. Rattlers 57% from the floor in the half. Wallace around Shibway. And he's fouled. Again, drive at Shibway. He is clearing his man out. If you don't have the entry pass, then get your man off the bounce. And look at that. Sheepway just has that big caboose, and guys can't get around him. And so if you're going to play behind him, all it does is open up that driving lane. Wallace has had a couple. Livingston's had one or two. And that's the thing that Sheepway can give you that's not shown on the stat sheet. Another missed free throw for Kaysen Wallace. And then a jump ball. It'll be Kentucky basketball. Ware got tied up. Five turnovers for Kentucky here in the second half. And Fami has outscored the Cats by one since the break. Wallace takes it again. Here's Reeves on the kick. Oscar Shebra. And we get a foul on FAMU. Didn't make the shot, but that was good action right there. We talked about it early in this game, how Reeves and the rest of the wing players have to move on penetration. I thought that was a great spot up by Reeves. Wallace found him, and Sheboy says, guys, if you miss it, don't worry. I got your back. Oscar Sheboy at the free throw line. This is a one on one. Guy behind the basket is holding up a Shebway rebound tracker, and it's shocking that it's just at six. He's got another one coming, and we got another game tonight. We'll take it above Walton Arena, where 10th ranked Arkansas will hit the floor against UNC Asheville. Six rebounds against a front line that goes six, seven, six, nine. Knocked them both down. That's a good sign. He's got a dozen. Lead back to double figures. If you want to earn playing time in the clutch for Coach Cal, you got to be able to get a stop on the defensive end. Hold your own and be trustworthy on this end of the court. Well, Frederick working his tail off. Trying to guard Chapman in the post. Shack like a two. Bates drives and Ware fouled him. And that's the trade off. You've seen Lance Ware keep some balls alive and then dominate on the offensive glass. But on the defensive end, now you got your big men having to close down the perimeter, and Fam U's been able to take advantage of that several times. So that'll put Jalen Bates at the free throw line. Bates moved in the starting lineup seven games ago. He's an Atlanta native at a Ramsey High School, started at Gaston College, and also played at St. Beach Petersburg Community College. Another one coming his way. And you see Coach Kyle making that substitution, and that is because he did not like the mismatch that FAMU was able to get spreading Kentucky out. Brings in a quicker defender in Toppin. Now the challenge for Toppin is, hey, Ware kept us some offensive possessions alive, crashing the glass, hustle plays. That's where he's got to get that from Toppin as well. Bates rattles the second one home. He's got 21. Off the double screen, ducks down, and a flush for Reeves. Uh, he's just been so good in the ball screen action, and Reeves moving without the ball, catches his man ball watching. Tillman trying to work on Toppin. Advantage FAMU. Rebound number seven for Oscar. Perfect defense by Toppin, forcing the contested two. Got the arm up there, almost an impossible shot for the Rattlers. Lead is only 11. Shibwe from 16. As much work as Oscar Shibwe put into the jump shot, I don't know that that's a shot that they want at this moment of the game. But otherwise, Kentucky now looking a little bit better offensively. Time and score, but you're right. Here's Wallace doing a terrific job, and Reeves moving without the basketball. 
trying to give Kentucky a more comfortable lead down the stretch. Thank you, gentlemen. Happy holidays. Kentucky leads FAMU 77 to 66. FAMU looking for its first ever win against a top 25 team. Time for our All-State Mayhem moment. Well, we've looked at Casey Wallace's offense. We've looked at his passing, but let's not forget what an elite defender he is. Not one, but two deflections before getting the pick six type play and finishing through contact. There's no question. 22 has been the best player on the court tonight been the most steady for 40 straight minutes. 24 points, 9 of 14 shooting. He's knocked down four of five threes. At least three of those by my count just off that high ball screen that they've gone under on. And an eight assist night for Wallace. What did we learn with in regards to Casey Wallace in the backcourt when this game got tight? Yeah, I think ideally you'd love to see Wallace and Wheeler playing with each other in the backcourt. I love having multiple point guards, but sometimes it's going to be Wheeler's night at point guard where things are going great. And other times it's going to be Wallace's where maybe they don't play as well together depending on the matchup. So all of a sudden you've got Wheeler on the bench and Wallace leading the show. Here's Reeves in the corner. Assist to Frederick. A really good ball movement there. And that's what that duo can do. When you have to close out on the shooter Frederick, yet there's another shooter in the corner, gets the defense scrambling. Samuel trying to answer, and it's an air ball from the wing and Peyton Williams. Credit this lineup for starting to close this game out. When Toppin subbed in and they got matched up a little bit better defensively, good execution on the offensive end as well. Reeves again, wide open. Oscar the rebound. Lost the headband. Uh-oh. Popped off like a rubber band. Reeves trying to clean it up. Probably put that thing on eBay, make a couple of bucks. <laughs> Oscar deep, and he's fouled. There's only three seconds left on the shot clock when he got his touch. And this is the ball movement beforehand that we talked about here. Getting it out of the trap, swing it, shooter to shooter, and that's really tough on the defense. Cash money finish. Go back to your earlier point, Tom, about time and score. And yes, Sheboy can make that 15 footer, but that time they were patient on offense and got him on the low block. I like that better. 12 points and four of six shooting, two rebounds away from another double double. Jacob Toppin, the ultimate team player, ran over to the baseline, found the headband, brought it to Oscar, and even offered to put it on his head. <laughs> putting a, a headband on somebody is like putting glasses on somebody. Like, no, your hands are too close to my face. I can handle it myself. <laughs> so another one coming for Shibwe, who knocked down two free throws a moment ago, and four for four from the line here lately. He could knock those down consistently, not off to the best start this season, but that's why you love being able to throw the ball into him down low because he could be a reliable shooter at the strike. Well, Kentucky on a 7 nothing run. This has been a really random game tonight. Random, like, bad Christmas lyrics. Newlyweds like Rudolph, like, it just doesn't make any sense the way it goes together. And some of the lineups... Um, Cal yeah. just kind of experimenting with, especially in the first half. Yeah, a lot of testing out, but I think one of the positives that came from all that was, hey, wait a minute, guys. We got a close game here down the stretch, so let me see who we want, who we want to go with. And remember, Toppin was a guy that was taken out of the starting lineup for the first time this season to start this game in favor of a more physical player, Lance Ware. So this was a terrific opportunity for him to say, hey, coach, I can bring that physicality and help close this game out. I think he's done a really solid job on this in the court the past couple of minutes. Cats open SEC play in a week on the road in Columbia. What will be a sold out Mizzou arena. Byron Smith with the bucket. And the New Year's Eve afternoon game against Louisville. The Missouri team has only suffered one loss this season. We've got Illinois tomorrow night, late night on the SEC Network. From St. Louis, I'll be there with John Sunville tomorrow night. That's always a fun rivalry game. Shot clock at three. 
case and Wallace a little smirk and a smile over to the bench and for Lance Ware. I, I don't know if that's because he didn't know the shot clock and Lance told him said hey shot clock shot clock because he glanced up quick and said I got to get rid of this thing and nailed it. Talking with Cal at shoot around today and his message was both to the team and to us was we got a lot of guys that are worried about themselves think team first worry about the team and we'll get to where we need to be and it's human nature sometimes you have to have a tough loss or everybody's struggling individually but every person on this court is either have, trying to have a great senior season or a breakout year or they're a highly touted freshman and so balancing those individual goals and sometimes realizing hey the only way I'm going to get out of this slump is through my team and a guy out of his slump is C.J. Frederick with his fourth triple of this game. Let's go, 20 point Kentucky lead. It was down to seven in the second half. Oscar finds the ball and shot clock is off. It's like this game is going to end with the ball in Casey Wallace's hands, which makes perfect sense. We still got the Arkansas UNC Asheville game to come tonight, and we're going to get a chance at some point to spend some time with Casey Wallace and talk about his performance tonight. Catch in on a 13 to 2 run of the last 346, and they win this one by 20. A little bit more concern in the second half, and Wallace with a career high. 27 points ties the season high with nine assists plenty to talk about with this one to break it down and get you set for the hogs from Bud Walton Arena in just a little bit unity series was successful for the cats rattlers with a two game Kentucky road trip will head back to Tallahassee for Dane Bradshaw fantastic SEC network crew I'm Tom Hart happy holidays Merry Christmas everybody now TV and TV. So Wallace and the Cats with a it turned out to be a comfortable win, although fam, you gave him a push in the second half. You had a great offensive game, 27 points, which is your Kentucky season high. What was working, especially in the second half with the high ball screen? Um, I just seen they were, they were like holding up on Oscar, you know, trying to get him stopped. So that opened up the paint for me and I was against the run. What's your favorite play on that ball screen? You've got the three point shot. You got the lob dunk. You can go to the rim. What's your favorite move? Um, it depends on how they play it. I mean, I like shooting the three, but I like to get on that rim as well. Uh, you were a 20 point scorer at Richardson High School in Dallas. That's nothing to sneeze at. But tonight, uh, playing for the Kentucky Wildcats, you get 27. What have you learned about yourself now, third of the way through this season, about your ability to score and the collegiate ranks versus what you were in high school? Um, as long as I'm getting downhill and being aggressive on offense, then it'll come to me. So I just want to stay aggressive and shoot the open shots in the air. Hey, speaking of open shots, what do you think of C.J. Frederick tonight? Man, he was he had it going tonight, so I hope we keep it going and we're going to keep feeding them. Kaysen, how has the locker room been the past couple of days coming off that loss? Um, it was just everybody lifting each other up, going on to the next game, and we're going to get a break, so hopefully we come back refreshed and ready to go. All right, before we let you go, you couldn't really name your best birthday present except for the Kentucky game you played in that night. How about your best ever Christmas present? You got one? Uh, Four-wheelers. My parents bought me a four-wheeler when I was younger. <laughs> What's better than that? All right, hit the throttle. Casey Wallace did it tonight. Congratulations. 27 points. Catch with a 20-point victory. Now back to the studio. Thank you.